Ladies and gentlemen, okay, you're going to have to tell me this. This is five Grey Cups? Four. Oh, thank God. Four Grey <laughs> Cups. Two Vanier Cups? No, two losses. Two in losses in the Buffalo Bills <laughs> yes. of the CIAU, yeah. CIS. Very good. And what, 17 Vera Burger Shacks? We are... 14. 14? 14 Viras. Unbelievable. 12 in the city, one in Edmonton, one in Ottawa. Dude, how are you been doing to the one in this, Ottawa? Man? I've been to the one in Ottawa. I've been to the one at the Vancouver airport. Okay. For sure. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever say hi to my brother? Uh, does he work at... Right. Oh, it's in his... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a while since I've been to that one, for okay. sure. Yeah, that's actually not really close to my house. It's I live in the East End. <laughs> it's worth the drive. It is worth the drive, for yeah. sure. They're delicious burgers. Yeah. How, what did, how did that... I mean, I know you like burgers. I know you like to eat. Is that... Uh, how did that... I like to eat. Uh, well... You know, growing up in the meat business, and uh, when oh, I right. when I moved out here, yeah. uh, my wife's friend from university had a restaurant in Kits, uh, mm -hmm. close to where I used to live. So I used to see him when we became friends. And uh, is that the the one where my jersey was on the wall, and then you took it off, put your jersey on? No, that was uh, <laughs> that was the other restaurant. My my jersey never made the wall. Uh, he just I think he just wore it around. <laughs> <laughs> he wore the clean. This is cleaning jersey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, so we became buddies, and uh, he had a restaurant, and he he had this opportunity to take over the Vera's in West Van. Okay. And so he did. He left the restaurant, ran the shack in in West Van for yeah. a summer. Uh, I was playing with the Lions, and uh, he asked if I wanted to go in and open one in Kits. Oh, so Vera's was already around. Vera's was around. Okay. Vera's was around for like. 40 years. Oh, so, awesome. Oh, yeah. cool. And wow. uh, so he took over from the original family and yeah. uh, ran it for a summer. And then we got together, opened the Kits location. And from there, we just started uh, opening stores. That's amazing. Yeah. How did you figure that out? Did you, what did you take in university? Uh, oh, boy. Uh, nothing to do a, with no, that? That's, no. that's hilarious. Just the general man. Bachelor of Arts. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, like I said, growing up in the meat business, my dad had a wholesale meat packing company. Yeah. We had the family butcher shop. So I grew up in, in stores and retail and, and figuring um, out how to do that. And then, so, you know, Gerald was the restaurant guy and, and so it was just a nice uh, fit. It helped that I was playing. So I wasn't really around as much and, yeah. uh, and going in, it was just, I was just going to be there and eat the odd burger and <laughs> wear a hat. And, uh, but the off season came and you know what it's like, yeah. I working out and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to work. Like I, I, can, do something. I can help out. And, and I like what we were doing. And so from there we just said, let's do this. It's crazy because yeah. they're they're all over the place, right? So let's go back to Ottawa, born and raised. Yeah, brother. What's your brother's name? Mark. Mark. Yeah, and he still works in the butcher. The he runs the butchery. It's called the butchery. The right? butchery in yeah. Bell's Corners. In Bell's Corners. Awesome. And that's been your family business, For mom and dad. Years. Has yeah. it always been same location? So same uh, sort of strip mall. We we moved locations uh, in the mall, yeah. but just because the mall got redeveloped, so yeah. we're uh, we've been in this new spot for. I think it's been about six, seven years now. Oh, okay. And you live in the same street as Jimmy Georgitsis? Is that your story? No, uh, my wife. Oh, Donna, your wife did? Donna grew up. Okay, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Okay, so uh, high school, I can't remember what high school you went to. Ashbury College. Ashbury, of course yes, it did. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and there was football there. When did you start we playing football? football? Yeah, we had grade nine. Grade nine, yeah. Grade nine that was the same as me, man, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so started late mm -hmm. compared to, I guess, what, and what kids do today. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like, my kids are. They probably played more sports and practiced more than I ever did up in that age. Unbelievable. How many kids you got? I got three. Three kids, boys? Two girls and a boy. What? And they're all in Rachel, sports. Rachel, Wes, Maya, and Rachel's uh, 17. She danced what? for years. Uh, now she's playing rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, my middle daughter, Maya, uh, plays basketball. Yeah. And Wesley does a little bit of everything. He's uh, 13. He plays basketball. He just finished his flag football tournament. Uh, he's going to play football next year, and yeah. so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, one of my kids played football for four years, and it was fun. It was good. Yeah. It got to be a bit too much. He how, didn't, how old uh, was he? Uh, he was he uh, eight to Okay, so he four, started four early. Yeah. yeah, he wanted to start early. His dad yeah. played football, yeah. and there was a sign-up, and he signed himself up. And I went, took him, and the coach, like, I was there 30 seconds, like, you're a coach now. So yeah. <laughs> that's how that worked. And that takes up, like, you know, four nights of your life oh, during yeah. the summertime when it's beautiful out, and yeah. you know, yeah. swatting mosquitoes away and watching the sunset. Yeah. And, uh, but it did become too much for our family in the summer. We like to go to the cottages. The games were always on the, on the weekends and stuff. And for a little kid to be smashing heads at that early age, it just seemed like too much. Like yeah. I, I was, 
I, I thought it was awesome and a lot of fun, but I always like sort of turn my head when the contact happened. And I'm like, this is a little kid smashing yeah. his head, right? Like, yeah. it's one thing for him to do it because it's exciting and yeah. his dad is there to support him. But like, his dad should also make a decision whether or not it's a smart thing to do. And I thought, right. you know, we've done it. We had a taste of it. He liked it. He was good at it. And if he wants to do it when he's older, that's up to him too, right? right. Grade nine. I think for sure because uh, there's other things you can do, man. Yeah. You know, like he plays guitar a lot, and and uh, well, he doesn't actually do anything else besides guitar and play video games. But so that's you so, know. so he's focused on the ladies. So he's a lady man. <laughs> 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 he's got his priorities right. Smart yeah. kid. Where was a guitar kid. when I was a kid, man? Yeah, for sure. You'd be so much cooler. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. I could think a little bit clearer right now. Yeah. So actually, it's funny because, uh, you know, Mark Zabnowski was on the podcast yeah. uh, last, and he said he, he started football at, I think it was like really young, like eight. It was a year before he was allowed to do it in school. They, they snuck him in the whole bit, and his whole life was sort of focused on playing football, and that was his goal. He had no backup plan. And, you know, guys like you and I who come from Canada, and we just do it because it's something cool to do at school, right, grade nine. We play way less games than they, they yeah. do down there. And, uh, I mean, so what are the other things that you did to sort of get, like, good at football? I know you just you can't get good enough at football playing Canadian uh, high school football to eventually play professional football. You know what I mean? There's other things like basketball. Right. And... So, I, yeah, I definitely played basketball all through. And basketball is probably my favorite sport. Mm -hmm. I think I was just better at football. But yeah. uh, but I always like – and I still like basketball. Like, I yeah, still play yeah. and um, – I think that was the biggest thing is is doing a different sport and, and being not just like I see the kids today that you know only play hockey and and those muscles get developed just for that one yep. sport and and that's when injuries happen right mm -hmm. like you're not sort of all around athlete yeah. uh, but I think football didn't become serious until um, well I guess university the first year of university where all of a sudden you had to start lifting weights yes. and it's like okay I can't just be that's athletic right. like yeah. I actually have to work out and get stronger <laughs> and and uh, and then even that was you know, you do that for four or five years and you don't really know what you're doing in right. university, but you're sort of just yep. training because everybody's training. And, mm. and then I met, do you remember Dave Ablack at the OAC? No. Um, he was a strength and conditioning coach. And I mean, he really like changed sort of how I trained. Okay. Like he taught me how to lift properly yeah. and, and do the Olympic lifts. And uh, and it really changed how I felt and, and performed. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you always meet the people along the way that have these key impact uh, yeah. on your career, for sure. I mean, it can be a coach, it can be a strength coach, somebody like that, who just sort of makes a difference in, in what you're doing and makes it more fun too, right? Like when you have something oh, yeah. else that you've, oh, I found a way I can train now. And that, yeah. that sort of impacts like uh, the whole football thing. When did you think you were going to play football at university? Uh, probably not till my last year of high school when, when things started to go well yeah. and, uh, you know, I got invited to that high school all-star game yep. and, and from there it was like, okay, I can, you know, coming from a small school, you don't know how you compete against the Sir Robert board right. and the big how, schools. Who did you guys play against in Ashbury? Philemon Wright and, I mean, we, it, like when I was, when I was there, we played, uh, it was just exhibition games. So we played like wow. lower Canada college, like we played some of the private schools in yeah. Montreal and Toronto. Yeah. Um, and we would play whoever would play Buckingham, so no not Buckingham, that was a Flynn school, but film and uh, who was the other schools? But it was, it was, it was a bunch of exhibition games. We played like six yeah. exhibition games all year. And no playoffs. No playoffs. That's so bizarre, bizarre. Man, for sure. I, mean, I didn't know I any it's different. different now, right? Though? It's different now. Now they're yeah. in the league and I think they've done really well. And, yeah. Um, but luckily, I got still invited to that All Star game, and yeah. so you got to see what the other kids in my age group were like, and yeah. and uh, and then you realize, okay, at least I can play with these guys, yeah. and um, and so it went, when I went to St. Mary's, it was kind of the same. Like I didn't know what to expect. Right. So you were scouted. Uh, scouted. What was the, the coach's name there? Uh, Larry Utek. Larry Utek would yeah. go around, and uh... so I didn't meet him till after I, I ended up going to Jamestown College for half a year. Mm -hmm. um, thinking it was the big scholarship to North okay. Dakota and yeah. NAIA Division Two, and uh, and that wasn't so much fun. And so I left there at Christmas, came home, went to semester school, just got a couple more credits, and then went to St. Mary's the next year. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, how, how does that work? Like, you didn't, uh, you, you didn't get into St. Mary's, or you just... You no, didn't... I left uh, at... When I left Ashbury, I was one credit short of going to... I see. One OAC short, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I went to the school in the states mm -hmm. then i came back and got my extra credits uh, at woodruff high school at woodruff, at woodruff high like a night school or something no just semester you school went back, so you yeah. went back from january to yeah. june and got my two credits and uh and then i, I called st mary's and and said hey wow. i'm interested in coming and yeah. um and yeah so he came down to meet me larry came to the house and nice and i guess he had asked around he didn't really know me from before and yeah. 
and so yeah, it was it was kind of a fluke. That's pretty cool to have a guy like that come to your house, right? It was cool. It yeah, was, I uh, remember meeting him too, man. Yeah, it was a little scary and nervous, and uh, but I I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know any different, and hadn't gone to a bunch of coaches or hadn't been recruited so much, and yeah. uh, I just knew I wanted to go there. One of my friends went to Dalhousie, and I went to visit him. Mm. I really liked Halifax, and thought, okay, I I could go get here. away from home get away from home for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's a big deal yeah. for sure. When I was being recruited, like I got recruited by nobody, basically. Larry Utech did come to my school, which was very flattering. I was in the middle of a uh, like an intramural three-on-three basketball final, yeah. and he was like, he couldn't understand that I wanted to play because it was, you know, it's your world at that point, and yeah. you're about to win it, and you, your whole, like, four or five years of high school, you want to win this intramural, th- and he shows up. I'm pretty sure he was drunk. I don't know if that's a thing, <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> anyway, and he's like, come on over right here, and I'm like, I'm about to play, and you can watch me play, and he goes, nah, I got more but like we sat there on the little bench my team lost you know yeah. lunch ended it was and... probably late to come to my house he was like, <laughs> it probably was the same year it probably was yeah because uh, yeah. i spent an extra year in high school uh, yeah. as well i mean it was the same thing yeah but then uh ian breck and bruce coulter came to my house uh, and i was like this is unbelievable like you know like the legend bruce Coulter and ian breck was a legend to me at the time too right yeah. like these two big name university football and they had matching like clothes on nice. in they're serious gear. Yeah. yeah like wow my mom made a big pot of cheese chili and it was some they stayed cool. for dinner uh, they didn't stay oh, okay yeah my mom made a big pot of chili and they're like yeah. no thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the place smelled like wiener dog urine yeah. or something i don't know they wanted to leave but quite flattering for sure for a high school kid yeah. and that's when you you start to believe in yourself right like when these people show up at your door yeah and you're like wow i really maybe can do this and you start to you start to believe and they say the transition between high school football and university football is greater than the transition between university and pro you, you you come from your high school envir- environment, which you're a kid, right? Yeah. You get there and you're playing against these, some of them 25, 26, 27 yeah. year old men, right? Yeah. Like it's a huge transition and it's it's really hard to go in there and, and even play your first year. Yeah. Did you play your first year? Yeah. So I, so yeah. luckily I, I went to Jamestown, that was sort of my transition year. And, yeah. and so I think it helped me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you got to see what the older kids were like and, and you had an extra year to train. So when I went to St. Mary's, I was kind of ready. like. Uh, I think if I would have went the year before, I, it would have taken me, mm-hmm. you know, probably a year to sort of get adjusted. And yeah. but I was ready to play, and 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 I trained all year. I didn't really play at Jamestown. I just practiced and trained, so I was kind of ready to play. And mm-hmm. uh, so I did. I, I was fortunate to start right away. And and well, that's uh, incredible, right there. Yeah. As a rookie, you started. Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that's so a pretty was, rare thing. I mean, it's funny. It was one of the reasons I went to St. Mary's. Is um, do you remember Paul Beresford? Uh, yes. He played at Queens. He was yep. running back. He lived like two doors down from me. And and. Uh, when I was sort of picking where I wanted to go yeah. or, or deciding where I wanted to play, he'd given me this Atlantic Bowl film of Western and St. Mary's playing, and the two ends at St. Mary's were both graduating. Okay. And I was like, oh, there great, you go. Great that place to go. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a pretty uh, you know, intelligent thing to do, right? Because yeah. like, that's the reality of yeah. it, right? Go in and get in where you fit in. Yeah. There's a spot, take it. And right. it's funny, like, I never watched film before, but all of a sudden I'm watching this film and like studying these guys that, like, Potentially, I'm going to go play with, and uh, wow. it was like my first film session. Interesting. How, how did you figure that out? Because the Cause Paul, Paul, Beresford... Paul gave me that he had the tape because I guess they were. I don't know if they played them the year or yeah. he just recorded off the TV or something. Yeah. But the old VHS tape, and I just watched that thing to death. Oh, that's incredible, man! Yeah. Like that's totally. I mean, that's what was to come for the next. Yeah. What eighteen exactly. years of your life or just something? Watching man. film, watching film, and figuring yeah. it out, right? Yeah. Because that's the name of the game, man. Yeah. Is is to plan, plan yeah. ahead. Football is like that. You can't. I mean, you can you can spend time in the weight room, and you can kind of spend time doing one on ones, which I, you know, you and I did yeah, in a did, squash yeah. court. But I mean, you can do ten reps of that, and you hate each other, exactly. and you're heading to Denny's, right? So a lot of it is so mental, man. Yeah. Watching that film, deciding in your head what you're going to do and how you're going to handle it, so it just happens when you're yeah. out there. That's a big thing about football, and it, that translates sort of uh, into everything in life, right? Like, I, I, what would you say um, you learned the most from football that translated into the, the business world? I mean, I think the most important thing is what football does is you work with 40 people, yeah. you know, and working with people in business and football and school, wherever, you got to be able to get along with people and work yeah. with people. And if you can't, you, you know, you end up doing whatever on your own and, and not being able to trust people. And 
And I think that's the biggest thing for football. You have to trust your teammates. Mm. And you work with them all for however long your season is. And, and in the off season, sometimes we go and train and work mm. out together. And you end up trusting people. And, and you have to in sports and, and in work, too. Yeah, for sure. It's all about uh, learning to work together. Yeah. What's, uh, so then you're, you're, uh, when you were an All-Canadian a couple of years? Yeah, uh, three All-Canadian. Three in, years All-Canadian? In St. Mary's, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, St. Mary's, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Three years. Three times, twice for that J.P. Metris nominee. Really? Didn't win it, but uh, three times Who nominee. won it when you, yeah. Um, yeah. It was a guy from Concordia. Uh, uh, he was a defensive lineman. Yeah, I know. Paul. Is that Paul? Uh, yeah, I know you mean. Yeah, I and uh, him. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah, maybe he got too many sacks on you. No, so I didn't get any. Zero, oh, okay, because he sure won the award over me. But <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking, anyways, I do remember thinking you were going to win it that year for sure. You know, there was one year I thought for sure I had a good chance, and uh, I got nominated early. I got nominated my second year, and I didn't think I had a chance. That's crazy. Then. Um, who was I think it was the guy Bruce Beaton, maybe from Concordia. No, he no, played Bruce at Acadia. Beaton. Oh, he's an O lineman. He from, was an O lineman. Uh, yeah. No, it was the guy from U of T. I think that won it, uh, Morris. Can't remember that guy. Big guy. Played in Edmonton for years. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, so great college years. Like I said, it would have been nice to win. Like, it's funny, you know, your buddies from St. Mary's, and it's still the ones I, I think about. Like, man, we missed opportunities there. Yep. Like, we had two chances at a Vanier. Probably could have went to a third, and mm -hmm. we just sort of. But was Chris Lynn your, he was My first year. Oh, he was? He's my still first there? year, he was there. And uh, so that was the year we lost to Saskatchewan by, like, three points. Wow. And then uh, we went two years after that and lost to Queens by like 31, 31 nothing. We got beat up pretty good. <laughs> but we just, uh, like I said, missed opportunities. And that was the year that uh, we beat Queens the first game of the season. Killed them. Yeah. We destroyed them. And we were the rest of the season thinking we beat Queens. We've got we're this thing <laughs> wrapped up. Yeah. This is ours. They come in the playoffs, smoke us. The next year we play them. And uh, I forget the, who the guy was, but at the reception after it, I see this guy and he's like staring at me and I'm like, what is he? And he lifts up his ring. <laughs> he's got the van and he comes over to me and he goes, I just want to thank you for this because I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. like, is he picking a fight? What's yeah. happening here? And he goes, no, because of you guys smoking us in that first game, we all went into the change room and realized that team thinks they're the best in the whole country. They're not going to get any better this year. Yeah. We go out to practice every single day. We work our hardest, and we will get incrementally better as this season goes on and be the best at the end of the season. Yeah. And that's what happened. Hmm. And I'm like, well, that's so it's a your fault. tough lesson Again, to learn, fault. man. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of it here. Yeah. I have to blame for quite a few yes. things. It's really interesting, though, that, I mean, you saw a spot where you would fit in, yeah. and, it, and it worked out, right? Like, you go in there, and you're having success right from the, right from the, the you know, the go, the, the start. Second year, nominated for the J.P. Mattress, which is something that doesn't happen, right? Yeah. It's usually a fourth or fifth-year guy. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Is it, uh, so you had the spot, and you had, uh, the you know, the opportunity obviously has to be there, but you, did, you must have, like, you know, worked, done something for that. Like, what was the technique heading in? Yeah. I think it was just training and uh, like I said, I used to play basketball all the summer yeah. and, and just be in good shape and um, and we had a good group of guys, but my rookie year at St. Mary's are, you know, buddies that I still talk to today yeah. and, and we really got along really well and, and uh, you know, the beauty of Halifax is kind of like Bishops, you know, there's nothing really else there and, yeah. and you know, it's a great university town and, and St. Mary's was kind of the same and, and so football was pretty serious there and we took it seriously. Yeah. And, did you stick around in uh, off season like the summer? I did there? one year, uh, which was probably my I, like I worked for Labats and Keys for one summer as yeah. a as a student rep, and and it, that was after that year I sort of like you know ate too much and drank too much, and, yeah. and I realized okay if I want to be serious like I can't do this every summer, and so I gave up the job and mm -hmm. and uh, and focused on more on training and, mm -hmm. and getting better. At what point did you think that you would be able to play in the CFL? Uh, I don't know. I. I remember my first year, we had two guys that came back, and, mm. and they both had tryouts. Uh, both didn't make it, but they came back to school and played another year, and 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 I knew they were good. And, yeah. and you know, by my second, third year, I felt like, okay, like I should at least get a chance, or mm. I should at least get a tryout. Mm. And uh, I, know I think the hardest part for St. Mary's is, because there's no CFL team, there's nobody really see, nobody sees you, and nobody really watches your games or scouts you, and, mm. uh, and I think they do a better job now, but... Back then, I think right. you know we'd have one guy come out once mm -hmm. a year, maybe the Atlantic Bowl, yeah. and, and who knew who he was looking at. Right, and, you, you were lucky if TSN, you know, played one of your two of your games, right? right? Like that was a, that was your right. exposure you had. Yeah. So by my fourth year it was the draft year, and uh, and I so I got invited to the combines and 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 didn't get drafted, 
and uh, so it was kind of devastating. Like I was, you know, there's three of us that were all That's crazy, all Canadians. We we there was three of us that there's no reason we shouldn't have been playing or at least yeah. had a chance to try out. Yeah, you know, I watched guys get drafted ahead of me that I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. And, yeah, uh, so I was shocked. I was uh, I was hurt and and thought it was done. And and my goal at that point was to go back to say you know, spend the summer at home. Hmm. And I talked to the basketball coach at St. Mary's and I was going to go back and play football and basketball. No way. And I, well, my fourth year I played, a, I played a game. Oh yeah. I played nice. one game of basketball. Oh, that's awesome. Three guys got in a fight during a game and uh, they got suspended for the next game. So nice. the coach asked if I would come out and help out. And, and that's I had awesome. such a blast. Yeah. Uh, you know, you play basketball. So yeah. like, oh, yeah. what a dream, like to totally to play a bit of college basketball. So I went back and I trained for basketball. That's amazing. You know, I lost probably about 20 pounds and I was still in good shape, but I was like, and it actually helped my football. Like I was, yeah, in, yeah. I felt oh. so fast, and and I realized I don't need to be so big and bulked up. Right. And um, so I had a good season, football season. Started training for basketball, and, and I signed a contract with the Argos as a free agent, and, mm -hmm. and I left, <laughs> went back and trained. <laughs> it's funny you should say uh, we'll get back to that, but the basketball things. I had yeah. that same discussion with Mark Stevnowski and that, and how uh, he played a lot of basketball. It was, it was one of his favorite things to do was play basketball. And I always attribute that lateral movement and like change of direction drills where you're down yeah. in an athletic stance and you're moving and into like football success, right? Yeah. That's what offensive line is, is being able to stay down low and move laterally and yeah. react to that, right? Yeah. So like you said earlier, other sports, you know, other movement patterns are so important if you want to be successful in any sport, right? Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's, and it's not just that, it's your brain too. Like, I mean, you're doing one thing over and over and it gets really old and, and you find new ways of, of, of uh, attacking that sort of, that, uh, that, that movement that from other sports, that's, uh, yeah, do you play? Is there a lot of hockey in Vancouver? Like, I don't. There is hockey is pretty popular. Is it? Yeah, it's men's leagues everywhere. And, okay, but kids uh, like you know in for Ottawa, kids, how it it's is, huge. Right? It's yeah. everything there. Oh, it's right? huge. It's, is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, l luckily, my son played one year, and uh, a game that you want to play basketball or football or yeah, basketball yeah. or hockey the next year. And he said basketball. I'm like, phew. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah and you, like, can, like, you can do that in the driveway in the summer and all right. that stuff. You know what I mean? That's a nice thing about basketball yeah, for sure. So and it, it's. I just find it so hard that they go so heavy into it so early at such a young age. Like yep. those kids don't know if they like it or not. Nope. They just get thrown into it and they put so many hours in and, yep. and a lot of them are done at this age and, right. uh, you know, and they're starting to pick up other sports and obviously there's good, they learned a lot of good lessons and training and all that stuff. But mm. I just think it's too early. You get yeah. worn out I quickly. Agree. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like you say, they don't even know if they like it. Right? They don't they're know. doing it because dad wants them to do yeah. it, you know, and they, do, they just look over to see if they're making you happy. Yeah. So I try to put him in as bunch of different sports as possible and see what he likes. And, yeah. and you know, he's he played lacrosse for years. He played basketball. He played some soccer. He played uh, yeah. this flag football. And now he's decided he's like, he wants to play football and basketball. I'm like, awesome. Like, yeah, that is cool. You know, when you're ready, let's. We'll sign you up and, and then get you go guitar. Try it. <laughs> it's until, until you don't like it anymore, and choose something else. Yeah, and you can play guitar. And then you can play guitar. The and, yeah. that. <laughs> You'll find your true calling. You know what the great thing about the guitar is too, like you know, campfires and stuff. Like, Absolutely. Oh yeah, like our so our family. Jealous. Our family used to just sit around at campfires, yeah. and now there's like singing and uh, merriment. So yeah. jealous. I, I couldn't know. sing or play the guitar. Like watching <sighs> these guys, like they would clean up. Dude, I can I can remember being at camp, and the guitar would literally get passed around in circles. And everyone would, you know, hit some Neil yeah. Young, beautiful, whatever, yeah. three chord song, and it'd sound pretty good. And then they pass it to me, and I'm like, I have no idea yeah. how to turn this on or where the batteries go. <laughs> this is, yeah, <laughs> it might as well be burning the fire yeah. because that's all I can know how to do. So, signed as a free agent with uh, Toronto Argonauts. That's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. yeah. Undrafted, oh, still yeah. want this dream to happen. Yeah. And then, uh, what do you actually physically like? Do you call them, or how does that work? No, so I've they, heard of people doing that. They called, like I said, I was, I was. Fine. I was done. I was going to go play the basketball season, yeah. finish up. I graduated already from St. Mary's, so I was just there to sort of play basketball and have some fun. And, yeah, that sounds like uh, Played one game, got a call from... Oh, you played one game? I of played a game of basketball. Oh, oh okay. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I practiced for two weeks, played a game, got a call that week that uh, Toronto wants to sign me as a free agent. I'm like, okay, like send me the contract, sign the contract. I was home the next week and hooked up with Dave. Started training and uh, getting ready for the tryouts. So how long was that? It's funny that you, you're training for basketball when the that comes in. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you, you're yeah. preparing to I be was, lighter. And I was done. I thought of football was over for me. I thought wow. I was, wasn't going to play anymore. Isn't that crazy, yeah. man? And, then, and, as, and as soon as I got the call, I was like, 
back on it. Like I was ready to go and I, yeah. you know, obviously I wanted it. I yeah. was just, uh, I didn't think it was going to happen. Incredible. And I, I didn't even think to call the teams and ask for a tryout. It's like, I just, I assumed they saw me last year at the evaluation camp. They weren't interested yeah. and, and that was it. Cause I know guys who had, had good college careers and yeah. they looked the body type and the whole bit who, when they were undrafted, they called every team, they went to every camp and still no luck, right? Like yeah. it's not a guarantee that, even if you're good enough that it's going to happen, right? A lot yeah. of people have to, to make those phone calls. And uh, that, that's amazing that, it, you know, you didn't. <laughs> and it just, well, it was bizarre. Like, I should have. I just it wasn't even should have. I didn't sure. even know it was a thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know I had to call them. I thought they had to call me. But, wow. Uh, so, again, as soon as I heard I had a chance to go to a training camp, even I was just excited to get at least one chance, you yeah. know. And, yeah. and uh, so I went home. I trained hard for it. I ran and lifted all the stuff. And... Mm. And training camp went great. It was, uh, and I was lucky enough to make the team that year. So okay, and uh, so there, uh, people who don't know, there's like sort of one position as a Canadian D lineman on the team, right? And so yeah. that, was that the role you filled the, the first year? Yeah. So uh, you know, I, going as a defensive end, thinking I'm going to be a defensive end in in the CFL, and yeah. and first day I got moved to nose tackle, and yeah, and so it was a bit of an adjustment, and uh, yeah. but. You know, it wasn't so bad. Like I, I learned to love it and mm. uh, and realize it's it's the same thing. It's just a little tighter, maybe a few more bodies hitting you. Right, you need to be a bit bigger, right? A little Is bit that... bigger, so you don't get because you get a little more double teamed and yeah. you don't have as much space. But uh, but I learned to like it and and when I as soon as I started training, I was it was quick to put the weight back on and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I was pretty ready. Wow. Yeah. So my first year, you know, obviously, and then had to play a lot of special teams and. You know, coming from as a defensive lineman, all of a sudden I'm running on kickoffs and punts, and, right. and uh, but I was prepared for that. Like I, I did some at St. Mary's, and and knew that if I wanted to make the team, I had to do everything that was, you know, I was willing to back up at O line if I had to. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, which is something that, that could have been considered, I would imagine. Well, I was. I, I mean, I went to a few of those O line meals uh, in BC. Yeah. Like you know, there was training camps where there were. You know, go fill in if somebody gets hurt, and, right. and I was willing to do whatever. Uh, did you ever think in university that to make it in the CFL you would have no. to switch? You didn't want to. You just no. wanted to have. I just didn't know. I didn't yeah. think that was. Uh, I didn't understand the game as much as obviously I do now, but I didn't understand there were certain positions, mm -hmm. and that I just thought if you were good and you could play football, you could play, and uh -huh. and I didn't realize that teams sort of pigeonholed you into certain yep. spots, and and I think they're doing a lot better job now, where they're you know before they wouldn't take a Canadian quarterback or a running back, right. and or if it was, it was just for fullback purposes. And, mm -hmm. uh, but now they're, they've sort of opened up and they're, it seems like they're letting kids play that are good enough to play. It seems like it, yeah. They're, they're realizing that the talent here is equivalent to the yeah. talent down there, right? Yeah. For sure. That's a, yeah. that's, a, that's a real thing. Maybe it is the training's different too. There's more, you know, more games now in, in Canada, the whole yeah. bit, right? Because when we played, we played, what, six games? Yeah. And then it was too cold out to play? Six like, it was games. ridiculous, man. Like, I don't know if you got the best coaching like yeah. you, got, you got good coaching but it yeah. wasn't the like i didn't really understand how to watch film until i got to the cfl and yeah. or nor did we even try like mm -hmm. we we watched our games we used to go in and watch our games on the sunday but that mm -hmm. was it like and we was just we just watched it like we didn't break it down and mm -hmm. who made this mistake and how do we fix it like right. and then all of a sudden you learn that in the cfl it's like oh my god this is we're yeah, it's a lot. Everything. That's right. Isn't it incredible step. how much? You know, when I started doing comedy, I would do the same, the same thing. I would watch, or even my motivation, amazing speaking. I would watch it every single thing, and not just the words I was saying, but where I was looking and body, you know, and everything, the whole bit. And it was from football. Like yeah. I didn't know what else to do. Right. Yeah. I'm like, how can I accelerate this? How can I get better at this? Well, let's watch the game film, man. Yeah. Which, as you know, is maybe the hardest thing you can ever watch. Right. Oh it my. It is a tough torture. day. You got to put on that extra layer of. Skin in and walk in there and <sighs> and you know and in your mind you know when you had one bad play, one bad or, play. and you're just like oh please here don't let it be so bad yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they can sit there and sit there and show that one play oh, 15 over. times or other times they just might skim past That's it right. you know what i mean and yeah. like, please be the skim past the time yes. never is right yeah. it's okay <laughs> they turn the lights on and they start drawing a chalkboard get that red light on there like <laughs> They're what are you light. doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, I always loved when they didn't care enough to eat, like to, to get out of their chair, but they would lean back in the red light and they would just yeah. keep, look at this. No, yeah. no, yeah. we want, no, yeah. come on. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it was, a, it was a tough day, film day. You, yeah. had to, you had to be ready for yeah. it. Or how about when you had a great play and they skimmed and they over, skipped over it? Oh, that <laughs> happened all the time. And you don't want to be that guy like, uh, can we just watch that play again? <laughs> Are we going to watch the third can, quarter can we just, again? Can we just rewind that play here? Yeah, it's true, right? Like, they'd skip over and you'd be like, 
Jokes, really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you not see that? Yeah, yeah, it was fine. You were fine. <laughs> Whatever. You actually so picked the right person for a chance. Yeah, you, you did <laughs> your job. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah you did no. what we're paying you to do. It's true. It's a, it was a tough day, and uh, <sighs> yeah, yeah, there's some rough rough ones out there. Yeah. But it's funny. It was always the same feeling, right? Like you, the, and they they would always tell you this, like. The games you thought you did really well oh, yeah. weren't weren't as good as you thought, and the games you thought you played terribly were like not as bad as you thought. Every time, and it, and it's always the case. Like, Every time, it's man. amazing how hard we are on ourselves, yep. right? Like, yeah, I can remember uh, having it, playing a game and then lying in bed that night and being like so happy with it and going, "Wow, I am the man! Maybe right. even all star this year." And then the next day you get there and you're like, "What? I was that bad? Yeah, yeah. I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. You've moved me positions." Yeah, it's uh, uh. it's true. It's uh, it, it is tough, and you know, it's what I try and instill the kids. Like, you know, it's when they think they have a bad game, like it's not as bad as you think. Yep. Like, it's yep. it really isn't. And yep. uh, but yeah, it's, it can be some critical stuff in there. Mm. It, yeah, and you're right; it did go the other way. Do you remember that one game when I got like four or five holding calls? Remember when Greg Mon started the meeting the next day by apologizing to me? Do you remember that one? I think I do. Yeah, oh my god! I was like, I guess this is the last game I'll ever play. I just they just kept calling me for holding calls. Yeah. It was like uh, Saskatchewan. It wasn't Saskatchewan. Yeah. Just, I, I remember looking at the ref going, "You're getting, you're ending my football career." You yeah. realize that this is, and then I guess they watched it, and there'd only been one that was legitimate and yeah. he apologized because he'd been yelling at me yeah. and I remember the, one, the proudest thing out of that whole thing was me just taking for me yeah. was the way I reacted to the head coach just yelling at me and telling me I was terrible yeah. and ruining the game and yeah. everything I just next play yeah. whatever you know and that's and that's what football, you have to right? do right? Yeah, yeah, you, you, to, you can't take it too personally and, right. and like you said we're hard on ourselves enough like I know if I had a bad play in one game and you'd go home the same thing, you'd be like, oh, man, what a terrible play. And like yeah. all night you'd be like tossing and turning over one play. One play. And uh, and then to have your coach yell at you about it as well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's it can be hard. But but you just got to go ahead, get up and go to the next play and yep. keep moving because yeah. there's tons of mistakes. Mistakes happen everywhere, yep. and, and you just got to keep fighting. That's life, man. That is the key. That's right. You That's probably the same fighting. in business, right? Same you know, thing. something doesn't go well. Pick you know? your head up and keep moving. It's a, it's give, for every for business, for sports, for yeah. relationships, for everything. Like yeah. just just keep working. Yeah. It'll it'll turn around. You give you give one customer food poisoning, there'll be more that come <laughs> through the door. This is we've Hopefully been here not. That, that would be the that would be the be all end. Yeah, wait a minute. No. Did you imagine? No. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So you get to Toronto. How, how was the season when you get to Toronto? You, you so played? we were four and fourteen. We were. Wow. We had uh, Kent Dawson came in as our quarterback, and we had all these guys that were signed. It was supposed to be this big year, and yep. um, you know, for me, I think it was right place, right time. We had one. Uh, Canadian D lineman at the time, uh, and so I got to play quite a bit, yep. and uh, and got to play a lot of special teams. So it, for me, even at four and fourteen, it, I was like on top of the world. Like I thought it was, I got to play, I yep. loved it, I was, had a great time. Um, and then Don Matthews comes in the next year and like revamps the whole team, and like all of a sudden we got Flutie and <sighs> half the Memphis defense, and all of a sudden it was like, what's going on? Like all the guys that. I think we had about eight guys left from the year before, and it was yeah. like, oh my god, this is like starting over. Yeah. And so it was a bit of a shock, uh, thinking I'm I can play now and I'm good. And yeah. and I get called into the office to meet meet Don Matthews and the defense coordinator, and and uh, he gives me a football and says, uh, I want you to be the long snapper. No. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know how to snap a ball. <laughs> wow. So had me in Sky Dome. I mean, like it's winter time. I went to me on a sweatshirt and jeans yeah. on. I'll go practicing in the hallway with this coach. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? This is your meeting? You've been this called in? This is my in? meeting. Oh. I'm like, I got my sweatshirt under my chin trying to learn how to snap. And I went home and I'm like, they gave me a football. <laughs> go, go home and practice your long snap. This is my second year. And I'm like, they gave me a football. I'm like, are you serious? Like, uh, I'm done. Uh. Like, I'm, I can't snap a football. So I went home and I tried and I practiced a little bit. But I just, you know, I just. I didn't get it, so I I, I figured hard, out man. we have one handed. I could do it okay. I'm yeah. like, all right, whatever. I'll I'll do them one handed, <laughs> and hopefully that'll be enough. And so day two of training camp. All right, long snappers over here, and I just I don't even go. I'm just like I'm staying with my D line, and I'm just and I get called over, and and they're like long snappers, and I'm like, so I can do the one handed thing. All I hear is get out of here. <laughs> So the whole training camp, I'm like, I thought I was done. I thought I was going home. Um, 
It was terrible. <laughs> it was a terrible training camp. <laughs> but I but I was playing good. Like I my defense was good and and so I, they kept me around for that and uh, <laughs> but I, I think they they had enough. They they didn't like me after that. That's <laughs> I love the ignoring. Yeah. Not happening. I, I just like looking around like I wasn't there. Like I didn't want to do it. It's so hard, man. It is hard. It's almost something like, it's weird to say, but born being able to do just your body composition, you know? Like I can't ever, I tried obviously yeah. so much too, yeah. right? No, no, just upside down is not yeah. my thing, man. Well, it's funny because I wish I didn't. Like later on, I think, oh, wow, I wish I did know yeah, how to do it. What a sure. great skill to have. And, yeah. But I mean, at the time I was so not into it and just wanted to play defense. And I'm yeah. like, well, fine, I won't play then. And like, <laughs> But anyways, it worked out. And I remember the D-line coach at the time, like after training camp, I'm like, they wanted to cut me, didn't they? And he's yeah. like, yeah, they wow. did. And I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fluke that one out. Yeah, so you made the team that year. So right? I made it again that year, back-to-back great cups, fluty years. It was pretty crazy. I mean, yeah. I didn't get to play very much. I played some special teams and rotate yeah. in, but so- it was what year was that? 90... That was 96, 97. 96. That was the year that was just like uh, they had a big celebration about it or something. Was that the, the greatest team ever? That's the thing, I mean, right? Yeah. I think it may have been. Yeah, yeah I think uh, it... it was a pretty good team. They, <laughs> I mean, really, they had guys from – we had Baltimore guys. We had Memphis guys. Like, I mean, we just had a big influx of stars. Like, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a good team. And, and great guys, too. Like, it was – I mean, I remember – I mean, probably the best defense alignment I ever sort of worked with is – Rob Waldrop mm. and he only played in the CFL for two years and but he was amazing Outland Trophy winner at Arizona and yeah. played at Kansas City for a couple of years but he was a guy that you know they wanted him to be 300 pounds and mm. he just hated it he, mm. he wasn't natural he, he was happy to be down to like 280 here and could play and is he Canadian no he's an American guy okay. but um but so good he's such a good player and I learned so much from him and mm. uh and a lot of the guys that were there and uh so it was a good great experience to win obviously and and to be a part of that team and yeah. But when it, sort of my contract, my rookie contract was up, and you know they asked if I would come back, sort of do the same thing. I, I was ready to move on, and, yeah. and sort of I wanted to play more, and and that's when Adam Rita was in BC, and so I, I signed with BC. Mm. I remember uh, well with Steps, uh, Mark Stepnazi's podcast, and it was about he talked about football, and from uh, I was like, so what was the goal heading in? Play football for a long time, play just play professional football, win a championship. You know, he's like it was all that, and when referring to winning the Super Bowl. His why he won his motivation was to to, uh, to feel what it was like, you know what I mean? Like to feel yeah. what it was like to win a championship like that, you know. For you and I who grow up watching the the Grey Cup and all these teams, but you know in Ottawa, there's lots of years yeah. where we were kids where they had a team didn't win anything, and then here you are, you've won the Grey. You came close to the Vanier Cup, yeah. right? So close, yeah. nothing, and then second year in the in the CFL, yeah. Grey Cup. Yeah. Like, how, how, what are the words that you so, can use to describe that? So, I mean, you know, losing those two Vanier Cups was probably, you know, the closest I got to any championship in high school or whatever. And, yeah. and, uh, sort of become so close. I mean, I remember just being devastated losing those Vanier Cups, like putting so much effort in and, and working so hard towards it. And, uh, and it like it rocked me for months, you know, like, and still, like, I still talk about it, like, still with my buddies, like, can't believe we blew it. And, and it's crazy. But, and so Toronto, like, again, not being able to be not starting or having too much of an influence. And like, it was such an amazing feeling to win. But at the same time, like, I really wanted to be more a part of it. Yep. And and so, yeah, it was an amazing experience. And it was awesome to win one and feel good about that. And uh, but for me, like, I really wanted to play more and, and be more of a part of it. And, and that's why, you know, when I, we won in BC and I was playing and it had an influence on the game, like mm-hmm. it, it felt I mean, it was, it was, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. So yeah. it's in, you got the two championships. So the goal from there was to go find a place where you also fit in, but fit in in a, in a role that you, where you're playing more exactly, and starting. Yeah. And you see, you saw that in, uh, in BC. I mean, I don't know if I saw it in BC, but I, I knew it was a fresh start and, yeah. and start over where maybe they could at least look at me in a different light. Like, you know, I, I felt if I stayed in Toronto, I would have just been used the same way as a backup and just mm-hmm. help out on special teams. And when push came to shove, uh, they wouldn't put me in and mm-hmm. and uh, where at least if I could start fresh somewhere I, I had a new another chance right a lot of people don't understand uh, when when people get to especially the CFL maybe there's other you know things going on in, in other professional leagues where they get paid quite a bit more but the CFL it really is day to day right yeah. like I mean your career can end literally from an injury but from other things too right like yeah. someone taking your place yeah. some coach 
uh, having a, someone who knows some, you know, yeah. that all insider trading stuff and all that stuff. And for you to last that long, I mean, it's, it's crazy, right? Like you talk crazy. about, you talk about like, you know, you'd pretty much given up until someone from Toronto calls you to yeah. tell you that you get a chance, yeah. right? Well, you, you talk about, like you're talking about Mark Stamnasi and I look at Mark Stamnasi like, you know, he probably had it, like in my mind, he had it easy from, like, I'm sure he obviously had to work his butt off and, yep. but it, he was a star, right? So yep. he was like, play wherever he wants, keep going, make mm. money, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure he, it was a totally different story. I don't mm. know his story. Mm. But yeah, the first three, even those first year in BC, like, it's just, I was happy to get out of training camp. Yeah. Like you say, like, was it, you know, was your goal to start and play in a great cup? Not a chance. Like yeah. it was to make the team. Right. You know, and from there to get some playing time yeah. and, and earn your spot and, yeah. you know, just earn respect to your teammates and yeah. work your butt off. And oh, the reason I think of this is because that's when we spent a lot of time yeah. then, right? Driving back and forth and yeah. stuff. And I can remember, uh, like every day you leave and if like you say you don't have a good day that yeah. day or you're questioning whether or not you're still going to be there the next day yeah you know and you have to find it within yourself to live your normal life but also to like justify the fact of what you're doing here you know and, yeah. and that maybe you can continue to do this and then yeah. you have to go okay now what do i do to do that yeah right and that was a daily thing for you and yeah. i you know we'd leave and go ah oh, that was terrible you know yeah. like and it didn't change yeah. it, like for 12 years i felt that way like i was going to training camp thinking like okay i'm done like <laughs> somebody's gonna take my spot yeah. somebody's gonna somebody's making less money whatever like there's there's always like you yeah. know you obviously push your hearts but they're always in the back of your mind you're like oh my god like is there are they gonna make a change here like yeah you and never it can, know it can be a whim it can be something someone says somebody else never hears know. it and then like, that's in their mind yeah. and then you're gone you're gone to another yeah. team man yeah it's a it's a crazy way to live but the, i mean the fact that you did it for what is it 13 12, 12 13 12 years, years yeah and and have so much success is yeah. is an anomaly, and it's definitely something that that's why we're talking about it yeah. because it's uh you know people need to just believe in themselves even when things aren't going their way right. and have the hope that yeah that anything can happen yeah. and and at the end looking back all those things that you thought were like terrible and the things that were going to make you quit were actually the things that were pushing you in that right direction right that you mentioned you asked earlier like what you learned from playing and that was the other thing that you sort of learn is is you can control what you can control like you can only control yourself you can't worry about what the coach thinks you can't worry about teammates think like you work your best you do your best and and that's all you can handle like right. your effort your effort you put in the off season yep. that's the stuff you control and, right. and so you try and, and you learn to sort of put the other stuff a little lower behind mm -hmm. in priority it's still there but you learn to sort of not think about it as much and and uh, and that's again for life right? business you control what you can control there's going to be other factors there's going to be competition and you just got to do your best mm -hmm. that's uh, that's that's what it's all about right yeah. that's that's the whole thing that we learned from football is that uh go out there and give it everything you got so you got to bc and uh you're there the second year so the second year you're in toronto great cup second year you're in bc third year toronto great cup okay bc was uh no we had a rough year my first year in bc I think we lost in the in the first round of the playoffs yeah. to Montreal. Is that right? No. Um, who did we lose to? Or was that the one uh, the home game when uh, I was uh, had a concussion? Ninety nine? No. That was, I remember yeah, my that first too. year was ninety eight. Ninety eight. Okay. Yes. So uh, then, yes, yeah, second. That was. I think we lost to, to Montreal uh, in the first round. I had a few concussions too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was like the, when we crossed over, right? Yeah. You came to came to the east and yeah. played Montreal. I got smoked there. Yeah. And then the second one was when we lost to like uh, in the in the in the Western we lost final to Calgary in the Western 99. final, and they went on and won the Great Cup. Yeah. yeah. And then so 2000 we won. Yeah. You, and we lost that game by two points. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. And uh, do you remember I was actually talking to you on the sidelines when Damon Allen was moving Fumble. the ball, and then he fumbled yeah. the ball. I was like, "We're doing it, man. We're yeah. going to the Great Cup." Yeah. It was so that was so close. Like it was fumbled the ball. Yeah. And, and we had a, such a good team. It's funny, like the 2000 team, like we, we didn't have a great season, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden we came together at the end of the season. So it's all about 99 was the opposite. We had such a good year and yeah. good record, and all of a sudden we blew it in yeah. one game. You know? That's why it's, that's why they play that's the games, right? Yeah. Game. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting know. about the CFL, too, and in, in most sports field teams, that it's about how you're playing at the end of the season, For right? Sure. The first part of the season is about figuring everything out and then learning to work together and then hopefully you peak by at that time by the end of the season and, and you play yeah. your best that's the most dangerous teams right are those teams who just make it into the playoffs oh, yeah. right because they got nothing to lose, nothing they, to lose. they can come on at the right time yep. and uh, if they play together 
That's right. It's one game. Yeah, and they have, and I mean, their pre, their postseason starts a little bit earlier than everyone else's because yeah. they have must win games, right? right? And then they hit those playoff must win games, and they've already experienced them, yeah. right? Because I remember in that Western final, I remember talking to you about this, going, "This is a big advantage to not have to play a week." But I thought after that, I thought, well, that was a disadvantage that right. we didn't play that week, right? Yeah. Because this team is this had a game playing, they got momentum, still right? And, they limp in, yeah. and ready to battle, man, like yeah. they just had it. Because I remember. It was a crazy off week. Remember the team was doing things at like the Hard Rock, and we were got together. Do you remember we got together to watch the the first round of the playoffs? Yeah. And it yeah. was like Johnny Scott had the uh, Greg Mons was being interviewed on TSN. And Johnny Scott took the big fake plant in the background. It was moving it around. <laughs> uh, you meet yeah. some characters, right? Some characters. Oh man, do you, do you remember when Johnny Scott would uh, walk on his hands? Yeah, he's a freak, eh? Unbelievable. Yeah. You ever you ever hear that story about Johnny Scott? How he tried out? He never played in university. This is a this is a, a CFL All Star, maybe even a Hall of Famer. I don't yeah. know, just amazing. He's probably the guy never who, lifted away. Never lifted away. Yeah. He's the guy who herniated the disc in my back, which I still feel yeah. like every day of my life. Yeah. And so there's tryouts in in one of the expansion uh, American it was teams, Memphis. Yeah. Memphis. Yeah. And so he does a workout. You know, he's a beast and everything. Looks good, I'm sure, in the workouts. But yeah. he never played football. And the coach at the end uh, of the workout goes, "Is there anything here anybody wants to show me that we haven't done?" And everybody starts chanting, "Johnny." He gets up on his hands, 300 pound guy, six foot two, and walks across the field and back on his hands. Wow! Yeah, that's I did not that's know that. That's a CFL yeah. legend. Yeah, I knew and, I knew he went to the camp, and that's where he got yeah. Uh, yeah. spotted. But. So did you never see him do it? Uh, I never do saw it? him. Okay, because I've yeah. seen him a couple times. Uh, mostly in training camp, people start hitting the table, Johnny. Yeah, and he would flip over and stand on his yeah. hands. Crazy. Specimen. I guess when I got there, he was over that. So he, yeah, yeah, for sure. That might have been yeah before you got there. Yeah, Johnny. Oh, but yeah, what a great player. What a great athlete. Yeah, I think he's still living in Hamilton. I think he stayed, right? he stayed in Canada. Oh yeah. wow, a lot of yeah. guys do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so here it gets crazier. Your start gets crazier, right? Like you've won now. You're in BC. How many did you win? We won one, one in, BC. in BC. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. then what, did you go back to Toronto, or so, yeah, pl- stayed in BC for another year after. Okay, uh, and then went back to Toronto, and, and played played another four years. Which is crazy. Let's say you've had like two or three careers by now. It seems like to me, yeah. you know, it just keeps going it just and keeps kept going. going. And, and and it's funny, you know, as growing up, you think, okay, like I will play for however many years they let me, and yeah. you know, sort of move on, and and then just life just kept moving on. Like all of a sudden, mm-hmm. I get married and kids, and and it's like, oh my god, like I just, I never thought I'd have kids while I was playing football. So you did? Oh, you, you oh, were yeah, married. Oh yeah, I had three kids by the time it was over, and <laughs> it was it was like it's, by the end, I was like, hey, it's time to like. I got to like family and yeah, yeah, kids yeah. are in school. That's interesting. And, yeah. And uh, my, well, I retired. Mm-hmm. I retired um, 2003. And I'm like, you know, business was expanding. Kids were, my oldest daughter was like already in kindergarten. It was mm-hmm. like, I didn't want to pull her away from school anymore. So that was in Vancouver? I, from Toronto. I came back to Vancouver. Okay. So they would come with me for the summer, yeah. uh, for the season. Then they'd come back for school. Okay. Um, and I'm like, hey, it's time for me to go home. Like I'm. I'm hanging on. I could probably play one more year, two more years. Yeah, but for what? Right? But it's time. Yeah. Like, a, and so I came home and I, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm happy, I'm good. And mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, so halfway through the summer, somebody gets hurt in Toronto. I get the call to come back and play. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll 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 help you out for a game. <laughs> like I haven't really trained, but yeah. Uh, so I go and help them out, and and they're like, hey, we want you to stay. We want for the rest of the season. I'm like, oh, I can't. Like I got commitments right. and and. Uh, so hold on, so they brought you in just for training camp? No, after training, it was like game six or okay. seven. And they brought you in just to play a game. Just to play a game, just wow. to help them out for it's a like game. The dream. <laughs> so, so you think it is the dream, right? Yeah. And 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 I thought so too. And and then by the end, I was like, you know, I was kind of sad I did it because, you know, I wasn't really ready to play. I didn't train as hard as I normally did, yeah. and, and I couldn't help out as much as I wanted to, mm-hmm. and and so I felt like I sort of like ended on a sour note as opposed to like leaving on a high okay. note. And um, but by the end, I was flying in for games and like uh you're like Deion Sanders, so flying man. in and out for games and by the by the last game I ended up staying and just wait stayed through the playoff round but I'm living in a hotel and yeah like, it just wasn't as cool as Ooh. it sounds <laughs> it does sound really cool <laughs> but when yeah. you're older like maybe when I was younger it would have been awesome yeah, but, yeah. but I was older and like yeah. I said all of a sudden family and yeah. work and yeah. like I was tired I was taking the red eye in on Thursday to play on you know practice friday to play on saturday like it just it was it became it's a long way to go man it became a lot and and yeah. uh like i said i i did it because i wanted to help them i didn't do it for me like 
they needed help and yeah. I said I would help them so but uh so you won a great cup another great cup your fourth great cup in, in Toronto, Toronto but that wasn't the year that we was the year no back and fourth no. and you won in Ottawa right in against Ottawa. BC against BC that would I mean that would have been a good way to go it would have been a good way to go but it was my yeah. best year that was like someone drew it, it all up for you season, yeah you were, yeah. you were an all-star right? all star that year and uh had a bunch of sacks like it was it was one of my best years and I was like I can't end like this that's the 10th is that the 10th year of your career? That was, it was 2004. Four. It was the 10th year. Wow. Of that's amazing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So, you, so, I mean, you just, you never give up. You keep just going. Keep you keep working, doing that, man. like you said, day to day. Yeah. Doing what you got to do yeah. to get better. And 10 years and, and you're an all-star in the yeah. CFL. Yeah. Whereas before you didn't even know if you're going to get a chance. I, yeah. 10 years even before. Even that year, probably didn't think I was going to make it. But yeah, it's, uh, wow. it's crazy. That is crazy, yeah. man. So that's it. You just got to keep working, right? And, yeah. and, and as you go, like. You, your focus becomes something different, right? All of a sudden, now you are trained because you want to win a great cup, and now yeah. you're trained because you want to be as good as you can be. And mm. and so it is tough on those guys the first couple of years because they they're they're really just trained to make the team. They don't, mm. yes, they say they want to win, but they're really just trying to make it and, and play. Yes. Uh, but as you get older, it's like okay, we're training for a purpose now, mm. and, and it's to win every year. And yeah, it is interesting when you get to because all your training leading up to is to make that team and it's all it's very selfish it's all yeah. about you yeah. and then the first day of training camp they throw down a book and it's got a picture of the great cup on it, and it's like this is our goal and right. you're like really i thought my goal was you know to, to make yeah. the team and it's hard to to sort of you have to realize that to make the team you have to then sort of lose your own personal goals yeah. and become part of a team and that's really hard for a lot of people and it that's sort of the secret to a, to a team coming together and actually having that kind of yeah. championship year right that yeah. successful year which maybe we when we were in BC that 99 year where we all these great individuals I mean well, we, we only lost by whatever two points yeah. but still that's the difference right yeah. that's the difference we lost to a, a team in Calgary who was the opposite right is who was the team who came in that's how they yeah. they won by two points right yeah. it's that's the difference is very small yeah but it's about that every single day work and everybody sort of realizing that you know you leave your own personal goals behind you they're right. still there right I mean yeah. you still have to you know take care of yourself to take care of the team but yeah it's all about moving everybody in that direction. And which is why when my son said he wanted to play football, I was like, yeah, I think that's great because where else can I teach him those lessons? Yeah, you know, where else true. can I teach a, a young person that it's about how well you, you play with the person beside you yeah. because that's life, man. It that's, is. And, and, that, and that's why it's great to have kids sports, right? Cause mm -hmm. they, they do learn a lot of those lessons and, mm -hmm. and you hope that they get good coaches. And yeah. so they do learn that stuff as they go on and, yeah. uh, because it, it'll, it will help them. And, you, you see it all the time like you know there are companies that will hire athletes just because of that they know they can work with people and not to say that everybody gets along in a locker room but right. but you learn how to work with them that's right and you yeah. figure it out you figure you out your figure problems out. quickly man yeah. for sure and coaches are a huge part of sports huge. unbelievable man yeah you can have the same team as coaches are switched and then everything the next year is completely different right yeah. like to, to learn to to have mentors and people who to look up to yeah like you you looked up to that d lineman right and you learn stuff from him yeah. and then you know you move on and then you become that person that people are looking up to yeah right who, who can you think of that was uh came after you that maybe looked to you because there had to be lots of canadian d linemen go man I, i'm gonna be the next noah Cantor, yeah, right that, that, that's probably a thing <laughs> that, that happened know. dude that like, i don't know you don't know that. but i bet yeah. you bet you like think about you looking to see if you could make it and you watch guys who were in the cfl and yeah. what you know if you look at a guy who played 12 years won four great cups and was an all-star yeah. like that's that's yeah. people were looking up to that and using you as the example to to what they want to be and then the hamburger thing for sure that's yeah that's well amazing. that's probably more of this <laughs> where can i get burgers do you too? eat a lot of hamburgers no i i used to yeah uh i don't i maybe one every two weeks really? or something yeah so i probably eat more hamburgers you probably than you do. do and i don't uh, yeah i mean there was there was years where we were trying everybody else and we were eating burgers all the time oh you, you try, try the competition, competition that's a good idea and, and you know you just want to see what they're doing and yeah. how's it different it's and scouting scouting always scouting yeah, yeah that's amazing uh, checking out their systems and yeah, yeah. uh so, but yeah I, I definitely don't uh not anymore no no Oh, not eat a lot of hamburgers. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah understandable. Well, you have to draw. I still a line. get a burger somewhere else every once. <laughs> For sure. What's I, do, the, I do love burgers. Yeah. yeah. So do I. So do yeah. I. Yeah. Veers burger. What's your favorite non veers burger? My favorite non. -Veers, I mean, you know, I like. I've definitely been to the In and Outs, and I think they're okay. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I hear big my, things about them. It's not my favorite. It's. Uh, What's a, is that in Vancouver? In no, no, American, they're in right? uh, mostly California, and, yeah. and to me, they're like a fresh mcdonald's like it's okay. you get two little thin patties with the american cheese and yeah. and the soft chewy bun like it's good it's just yeah, yeah. not it's not amazing yeah. like 
uh, I don't know. I probably probably the more restauranty places that have like yeah. that'll do a, a fresh made patty and mm-hmm. those places. Is that the like. what's the Avira's advantage? Is it fresh? So we, you do fresh uh, yeah. fresh patties made daily. All the stores make the patties. And, oh, they make them yeah, right there yeah. at the store. So, That's huge. Yeah. That's so uh, so that is definitely the advantage. We're mm-hmm. not getting you know frozen patties sent to us or yeah. somebody else making the patties and sent in we make each store makes their own and yeah. uh that's definitely our advantage what are the buns like it's a good bun we got a black and white sesame bun mm-hmm. and uh it's uh it holds it holds the perfect proportions uh, for, it's uh, so important right there's important. so many little important things yeah. in, in a perfect hamburger that's man, it. for sure and french fries yes i love french fries yeah, yeah. Man. we do a good fry too we got uh you know fresh cut kennebex and uh kennebex, kennebex potato yeah Never Not heard that wrestling. before. But my cottage is on Kennebec Lake. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. What, so what is, why is it called Kennebec? Kennebec Lake? It's uh, west of Perth, Highway 7. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a French fry. The lake is, really? long, it's almost, yeah, it's a long, narrow lake. Maybe, maybe is there potato growing, potato farms around <laughs> I'll there? take a look around. <laughs> I didn't notice any. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we're, like I said, we're happy with the, uh, we're always happy with the product we put out, and mm-hmm. uh, we, I think our food is amazing. Yeah, and uh, it's worked well for us. Uh, if I go, like I'm going to the airport today. Can yeah. I get a burger uh, on the departures yeah. area? Okay. Go past security, and you'll yeah. uh, you'll get a burger there. That's that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. So you've got 13 stores. What's the what's the goal there? We got 14, 14. total. Yeah. Uh, the goal is to always improve. Uh, we got new menus coming out uh, next week. Um, so we're constantly trying to tinker and, and improve and always try and get better. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you work daily to improve yourself. Yeah. Is it more like you can have more of them or no, we're going to tighten up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some menu price increases, just the way things are going and, uh, minimum wages and uh, the cost of food is right. going up. That's a big deal. Uh, oh, the cost of food's getting crazy. It is getting man. crazy. So, so, and property taxes here and rents for our, our stores are going up. So, so we had to do a bit of an increase and, uh, and just so, just try and tighten and, and give good value still. Are they uh, franchises or are you majority own majority are franchises? Okay. Yeah. So we own one. Yeah. Uh, and then my brother has the, the family one. Oh, you have one. one. We have one corporate store that we okay. operate, and yeah. the rest are franchises. Where, where's that one? Uh, Corn and Kits, the original. Oh, awesome. Oh yeah, I know exactly yeah. where that is. Oh, yeah. cool, man. So that's the one that's been there forty plus years. No, now? The, well, sorry, the original was West Van, and mm-hmm. that was a concession, and we lost that uh, probably ten years. ago. Excuse me, 10 Wait, years ago. We mean lost it? Like, I uh, just they came up for uh, tender and we lost the bid on it. So, for, you for the actual you, with the city, you you uh, put your offer into the city, oh, it, and it was you, we put in our offer what? and we they we got taken away from <laughs> it. It, it, it was a bit of a fight, it was uh, it wasn't it wasn't a happy situation, wow. But, uh, but it was a seasonal store, it was only yeah. there for the summer, okay. And, and so, at this, you know, as much as we wanted it for nostalgia, yeah. and it was still a hard store to operate because it was it was only two months a year. Oh, I get it, um, yeah. yeah. So we put in our offer that we always did every year, and yeah. somebody beat us out. There you go. It's just another loss, right? It's Look another, back, and it's probably for the better. It happens, you know? <laughs> and you move on, and you just keep going, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that was awesome, man. It's been an hour. I'm going to go. Uh, it's been an hour? It's been an hour. Jeez, we haven't even caught up yet. I, I know. I, I, I know. haven't seen you in so long. It's crazy. Yeah, it's great yeah. to see you for sure, man. Did, you didn't go to Tampopo when you were here, did you? Uh, What's that? The all you can eat sushi place? No, that, I went it's there not there anymore. But. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you remember the time where I went there and ordered uh, way too much food? Is that yeah. the time you're so, talking about? So it was me, you, and Doug Davies. Yeah. Yeah, and we thought he liked sushi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he liked chicken teriyaki. <laughs> right, and right. we ordered, we had a table full of sushi and we yeah, couldn't yeah, finish yeah. it. I do remember that. Remember and that? we had to pay for it because yeah. you pay for what you don't eat, yeah. right? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. Wasn't, uh, I thought Joe Pow Pow was there too. I, I think it was just me, you, and Doug. Okay. Yeah. I went with one, Joe Pow Pow one time in, in Connie Kawahi, yeah. the line yeah. coach yeah. and the offensive coordinator. And I'd just come back to BC. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and it's like they took me out. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is nice. They're welcoming me back. And then yeah. they started asking me about players that were on the Winnipeg team that I'd just been released from because yeah. they wanted to <laughs> sign them and not me. <laughs> like, what? I can remember going, oh, he's pretty. Wait a minute. It was terrible. He's yeah. on Coke and he's yeah. hot. <laughs> so you don't want that cancer in your locker room. I think I said that about everybody, you Perfect. know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mind game, too. It is a mind game, too, man, for sure. Do you remember the time that we smoked at Mike O'Shea? Kickoff, return. We got a double? Yeah, we smoked him. And we don't, I know, we kind of knew it, but later on that night, we saw him afterwards and he came over laughing and stuff. It was like, uh, it was that thing. Remember, we started smoking people. We started looking the other way and then just stepping into them and yeah. it happened. That's how I got my concussion, of course. But uh, yeah. 
that's uh, that was one of the highlights of my whole career is Mike O'Shea <laughs> flying. <laughs> I'll remind him about that. Yeah. Oh, see see him. Well, when he comes to town, usually we get to see. Oh yeah. Yeah, we go He's up for a bite to eat or something. Yeah, I met yeah. him. Uh, at the draft when I was like, you know, when they invite yeah. you to the draft or whatever, and he'd been the rookie of the year. So he, the previous year. So I was, he was there as one of the, yeah. the award winners. And I was like, wow, this is a unique individual, man. Yeah. Oh, he's such a great guy. So funny, such a man. great leader. Oh. Such, such a great player. Like he's, yep. he's, I'm happy he is where he's doing what he's doing now. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, I think he's such a great guy to lead yeah. a team. Oh, he's perfect. He's yeah. a perfect CFL, uh, yeah. you know, person. Yeah. He's whatever really capacity yeah. that he does, right? It's true. Like, uh, like you know, Gizmo. Or, have yeah. you ever thought about coaching in the CFL? Uh, no, I did a training camp one year as a guest coach, yeah. and uh, I'm just not ready. My kids are young. Right. And it's a it's a major commitment. It's a tough job, man. And it's way less secure than uh, yep. than playing. Oh, my so, gosh. You talk about, yeah, yeah. less secure, you'd so, be gone. So maybe down the road, but not right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome, man. Thank Great you very much. You. That was really, that was awesome. Bam. Turn this off.